Here I've got a Retina 1. This is a model 119. Um, a nice early Retina. Now this one's got a problem. It doesn't open correctly. And if you peer in here, and see if I can get you at the right angle. Probably not. The struts are very damaged. They're very, very bent in there. They're so bent that they're pressing on the bellows. And the bellows can be seen there. They're very distorted. I don't know whether they're damaged and no longer light tight. I'll find out. So I've got to strip this camera and deal with it. It's got other problems. The taking lens looks very awful. It's very dull look to it. Um, I don't know whether that's on the surface. If it is, there's not an awful lot I can do apart from cleaning it. But the camera certainly needs to be stripped and um, dealt to. So I'm going to start on that. I'll start at the base of the camera since I've got it this way up. I'll remove the two screws from the depth of field scale. Being an early retina, this is black lacquer finish and nickel, nickel plating. It's not chrome plated, it's nickel plated. See if I can get this leather off the base in one piece. That's stuck very well. Need to get the leather off to get this to the screws that hold the struts in place. There's a little plug here that sits over the hole where the sprocket shaft runs. We'll put that back when I'm done. There's the screw I mentioned that holds the um, struts into the body. Now there's a little metal plate here, we'll just get that off the leather. If it'll come. That's like it's stuck there. Now I can peel this leather up, but I've got to be very careful when I get to this point because it's a very narrow piece by that um, button and it's likely to tear. It might tear there regardless of what I do or how careful I am, particularly if it's stuck down very well. But I'll work my way towards that piece and hopefully be able to get it loose. If I can see from what, how it's coming away from the camera, you can see that those are fibres of leather, which tells me that the adhesive is stuck extremely well to the camera body. And we're actually peeling the fibres off the leather as we lift it. getting my scalpel down underneath those leather fibres there to give me the best chance to get this piece of leather off without it tearing at that point. That's it. That's off. That's good. Right, the top of the camera. Well, we need the advance knob off. The advance knob is left hand threaded. Quite commonly, it's very tightly stuck on there. So I need the spanner to hold the shaft from the inside. And I may or may not be able to get that knob to turn with my fingers. We get the spanner in place. I can't shift that. 
So there's a technique for getting that loose, which I'll show you shortly. Right, what I'm going to use here is a strip of leather and a hose clamp. I'll put the strip of leather around the knob to stop it from getting scratched, put the hose clamp in place, do it up extremely tight. That'll give me a good purchase to get this knob to move. It's left hand threaded so we have to turn that clockwise to get it loose. So I'll get that in place. See if I can get this in place. I want to keep it above the level of that black painted top of course because otherwise it'll end up with even more paint off than it's currently got. That should do. Let's see if it'll come loose. Oh, that was a vain hope. It doesn't want to come loose. I'm going to have to go down, put this in the vise and then use the spanner to turn it the other way. So I'm off down to my shed back shortly. Well that was all over in seconds. I took it down to the gate to the shed, got this in the vise, used my spanner from the inside, leant on it with the spanner and it immediately came loose. No arguments, no trouble. So there's our nickel plated knob off undamaged and unmarked which is the uh, always the challenge with things like that. Now I can continue taking the top off the camera. The top cover has got a single screw at this point. There we have it. I'll remove the uh, frame counter next. Let's find a good screwdriver. It's quite a broad screw but quite a thin a narrow slot. I want a wide screwdriver tip but thin. Lift that off. Now take note of these components. How they fitted. How they were arranged. I'm going to unhook the spring from that lever, undo the screw here, lift off the lever. There's a lever below it that's got a spring hooked around it. We'll just unhook that spring, lift off that lever. A spacer washer underneath that, another lever here, and another finer washer underneath that point. This disc has got a raised centre. Then we have a ratchet wheel. The ratchet teeth are swung in an anti-clockwise direction. See if we can get that off. Yeah, that lifted off without a fight. A plain disc below that. Another ratchet wheel with the teeth swung in a clockwise direction. The other was the anti-clockwise direction. If you don't take note of those, you can sort it out at the reassembly stage because it's not hard to tell which one would go where. It's working that up that shaft. There are flats on that shaft. Lift that off. There's a plain disc below that. 
it's a bit reluctant to move. Let's get that off. All right. A single screw holds this lever in place. And that's very tight and that screw is wanting to come to pieces. Let me try another screwdriver and give it an encouraging tap. It's much happier about the idea of coming out now. Pop that down there with its screw. Because this spring here is likely to get caught and damaged on something, I'm going to unscrew the post that it's on and take the screw and the post off together pop them to one side our film advance bush there is held in with three screws we can have those off Nothing has been loose on this camera. It's quite common for screws to be loose on old cameras that you work on. Nothing's been loose on this one. Lift off our film advance shaft and, and the bush. That's just plain. There's nothing tricky about that. It's just a bit gummed up with dried grease. We can lift off this part of the uh, advance retired lever and its screw there are two screws that hold the viewfinder top on in place that one was loose it's also a bit buckled I think I might be wrong And one on the other side. Now the one on the other side is a bit more awkward to get at. Because your angle of attack is not good with that rewind button, rewind knob in place. I pulled the rewind knob up, it gave me a better access to it. Lift the top off. Right, so that's looking pretty stripped down now. We can take out the take up spool and we can leave that sprocket shaft in place for the moment. Likewise, we can leave the rewind in place. I want to remove the shutter and lens assembly from the back of this camera. So I've got a tool here that'll probably do the job for me. Put that in place. And since it'll be tight, I'll need a spanner on that to help me turn it. And it's that one. That's loose. It didn't fight at all. Take our shutter and lens assembly out. With its retaining ring, I'll pop that to one side. Out of harm's way. The door at the front of the camera, I'd like that off. We've got two screws, the hinge pin screws, one at the top. Now there's a spring on this door. Most retinas do not have a spring on the front door. The early ones did. One here. And I can see that spring acting against the body just down in here. I think you can see it, it's visible down there, so I'm just going to slide my roll down under there so that when that spring came up it didn't scratch the paint finish on the camera body. And I'm going to lift the door off the slots here, and I'll do that by applying a little bit of upward pressure on it. 
Now I can swing that away. That's our door off. So now the camera's looking a bit more stripped down. I've got to dismantle the focus mount here. I'm looking at it to see if there's any sign that the focus has shifted. There's not particularly any sign that that's been the case. I'll mark a line across the focus scale ring and the outer helical. The one on the other side. I'll put a double one at the other side so I can distinguish the two. And we'll take out those four screws that hold the focus scale ring to the outer helical. Those are small counter hung, countersunk head screws. Are fairly easily damaged if they are over tightened. Lift off the focus scale ring. We have four screws here that hold the focus mount to the back of the front standard. These are the larger screws. I'm unscrewing those and removing those. One is trying to get away. Let me just tip that out of the body. There it goes. There are four smaller screws visible down the holes in here that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. I'm undoing those. One last one to go. That's quite stiff that one, it was hard getting it to start. The screws are quite long, they extend out the other side to some extent. Um, and because they extend out the other side, they're prone to get a little bit of corrosion on them. I'm seeing if I can separate the bellows from that focus mount. Yeah, one of the screws has just fallen out. Checking that the others are completely undone as well. That's two. That third one, is that loose completely? It is. That's three. One more. Is it still hanging on to anything? No. Right, so I can pull that focus scale out from the front there. Oh, it's coming with the uh, felt. There's a felt piece that runs between the bellows and the back of the front standard. That's come away with it. It's stuck on the bellows at the moment. I'll peel that gently off. I want to glue that back to the front standard when I finish. Right, so now we're down to the body and the struts. Now the struts are very damaged. Um, pushed into such an extent you can't even close the front and I don't know what damage has been done to the bellows. Four screws. One here, one here, two in the film cassette chamber here and here. I'm just going to put a spot of uh, naphtha on those See if it'll help loosen them up. We'll do them one at a time. This is likely to be the easiest to get to. That came loose. I'll undo that screw. The ones in the film chamber, film cassette chamber, 
they may not be too awful, we'll see. One's come loose. The other one's come loose. That leaves us only to fight with this one on the bottom. I'm going to use my scalpel to scrape away the remains of that leather and adhesive around that screw so I can see it easily. Put a drop of naphtha on there again. Take my screwdriver, make sure it's seated in the slot because the slot is quite clogged up with leather fibres and uh, probably some corrosion. That screw is going to come loose. You okay, go, that's loose. The bellows struts, can we get them out? We can. Right, look at the state of that. I've never seen some struts as badly damaged as that. I don't know what could have happened to this camera to cause that to happen. And the bellows, I'm looking at these bellows now. They're quite marked and they're not creased correctly. Might be hard to get these to fold back as they should. I will we'll certainly attempt that. I'd rather use the original bellows if I can. I'll see how they go. Yeah, it looks like they might be able to might be able to encourage them to um, to move correctly. So let's look at this. I mean, this is just a train wreck. This is, construction's all riveted together, so I cannot just take it apart in order to straighten each component individually. If I wanted to break some bellows struts, I'm not sure how I'd go about achieving this. Here are the struts, and as you can see, they're pretty badly mutilated. I'm going to have a go at straightening these up. Um, I don't know what my success is likely to be on this one, but uh, if I can't get it straightened up, I'll be having to deal with it another way, and that, the other way that I have in mind would be to replace the lot, if I can find parts. Well, so far so good. I have those struts working. Open and close nicely. The bellows, unfortunately, do have a light leak. I'm undecided at the moment whether I'm going to patch the bellows or try and replace them completely. I suppose what I decide to do is going to be heavily influenced by um, whether or not I can find a suitable set of bellows to replace them. But I'm pleased to uh, see that as I was able to get those struts bent back into shape, it was looking a bit like a lost cause there for a while. Every part of them was bent. But it opens and closes normally. I would say that the struts are pretty, pretty parallel with the camera body. So it's looking like it's on the road to recovery, not the road to ruin. I'm going to go and search through my parts now and see if I've got some bellows that I can take out of something and put into this. Here I've got the body. I've got the front standard and the bellows struts in it. It's all connected to the bellows at the moment. You can see it opens and closes. The front standard's nice and firm. That's a very good result as far as those struts were concerned. I'm very pleased with that. The bellows themselves They've got a light leak on the bottom. It's uh, at about this point, and it'd be where the hinge on the bellows was, where you saw how damaged they were. That was folded right in. 
and that would have been rubbing on it. But there's also a little pinhole in the corner right up in here. And I don't know how that occurred. It's almost like a sharp, something sharp was poked into it. Um, I suppose it's vaguely possible that someone was levering inside the camera trying to straighten up the struts and they may have um, inadvertently poked something through the bellows at that point. So, ideally I'd like to replace those bellows. This is my chosen uh, organ donor, a Retina 1 Type 126, which is the identical camera to the 119, except that the 126 had chrome trim, chrome top plate, all the features and fixtures were chrome, rather than the nickel plated features and fixings fixtures on the 119. So I'm going to remove the bellows from this camera and hopefully transplant them to our repair job. Wish me luck. You're probably keen to know how I'm going to get the bellows off the body. Now what I've got to do is typically I use acetone and I swab acetone around the edges of the bellows where that's glued back to the body and then I leave that to soak a little bit keeping it wet and then typically pulling the bellows away and probing at it I can get it to lift at one corner and then just peel it away keeping that uh, acetone running so that uh, any adhesive is softened up. That's always worked well for me in the past and I hope it'll be the case today. All right with a lot of uh, patience and isopropyl alcohol I was able to encourage my donor bellows from the body they were previously inhabiting. So now I just have to strip the old bellows out of the camera I'm repairing and glue this set in place. I'll let these ones dry out a bit first. They're a bit saturated with isopropyl at the moment. So here you can see I've got the bellows off the camera I'm repairing. Um, you can see where the adhesive is stuck to it there. It was, they were stuck very well. I've seen bellows come away on later cameras quite easily, but these ones were quite, stuck quite well. So all around that track there, I will scrape that back to clean metal in preparation for gluing back the bellows that I've reclaimed from the organ donor. I'm going to start getting these bellows back into the body now. So the first thing I want to do is run some adhesive around the body where they're going to go. I'll pop that to one side, let that set. I need to apply some to the bellows. So I'll transfer that with a, using a toothpick. Now there may be a certain amount of delamination with the bellows at this point. So I want to make sure that this coat gets soaked right in and sticks those various laminations together. So that the bellows are robust. Now this first coat I'm going to leave to dry just getting some adhesive in there between that inner surface
in the outer just checking that the other side's okay that looks good slide a bit into, the, into this corner here that's fine so those bellows and that body I'll now leave them aside for 10 or 15 minutes and let that glue dry right out that's contact cement it's meant to be left until it gets tacky and then you press the two surfaces together my chances of getting these correctly positioned hovering in space and then pressing them into place are very very small I'll wait for this glue to have set up completely and then I'll put a fresh coat just on here and then while that's still wet I will press the bellows into place and then I'll leave, a, leave something on top of them to keep them compressed and um, in the space of an hour or so that'll have dried and hardened and those bellows will be stuck there for good or at least until somebody comes along with some naphtha and softens the adhesive and peels them off but that won't be my problem It'll be somebody else's problem.